everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to another episode of Page to Screen. Today we are going to be talking about the different film and TV adaptations of Pride and Prejudice. Before we get started there are a couple of versions that I'm not going to be including in this video and I'm going to explain why. The first one is Bridget Jones's Diary. I know, I love Bridget Jones's Diary. But it's not Pride and Prejudice really, it just kind of takes Pride and Prejudice as a stimulus or as an inspiration for a film. There's not enough similarities there for me to be including it in this video, I'm sorry. And the second one is a modern version which I found on IMDb, I can't remember when it came out, probably like the early 2000s and um, it's set in the US in modern day. And I was looking at the reviews and they are all dreadful and I was so excited, I was like oh my god a really awful version of Pride and Prejudice, I need to watch it. But I could I couldn't find any version of it online and I couldn't find a UK DVD that I could buy either so I'm really unfortunately I couldn't watch it so I can't include it in this in this wrap up today but if you wish to add the discussion by talking about that version if you've seen it down below I'd be very interested to hear your thoughts. So starting chronologically in 1940 with a film version starring Greer Garson and Laurence Olivier I was very pleasantly surprised by this film because I think I went in with the preconceived Exceptions that films at this era weren't really about um, interpreting the literature, it was more about let's have a nice fun film that everyone loves, we'll have Laurence Olivier in it, it'll be great. But actually, although this wasn't really Pride and Prejudice and they changed a lot of scenes, I really enjoyed it. It was very funny, it was charming, it was delightful. This was generally really hammed up for comedic effect. Um, a lot of the interior scenes are obviously filmed in a set and not in an actual house. So that does give you the feel that you're watching a play and quite, probably more accurately a pantomime. Like there's lots of slapstick in there. Mr. Collins particularly is hilarious when he's proposing to Lizzie and she's refusing him. He's on his knees proposing to her and he's walking along the floor on his knees being like, no Lizzie, be my wife, be my wife. <laughs> it's just, it's ridiculous. It's completely ridiculous, but it's really funny. Mrs. Bennett is so over the top and really loud. There are a lot of fairly inessential scenes which are cut out from the film and lots of other things that are put in in, in their place, but mostly to make it more funny or to make it more um, lovable. For example, when Lady Catherine de Bourgh comes to visit Lizzie to say, you mustn't marry my nephew, um, you find out in this film that Darcy is waiting outside and she comes out and goes, she said no to me Darcy, she'll do for you, I like her. And it's like it was all a ruse to test Lizzie to see if she really liked Darcy, um, which is obviously not what happens in the book, but it's, it's still quite nice, it just makes it really nice and everything's a happy ending and in the end I think all the girls get husbands, not just um, Lizzie and Jane and Lydia, so it, it's just lovely. Although they have lots of big gowns with huge puffy sleeves and I just... I do wonder if they knew what period this was set in, or if they had just lots of gowns left over from Gone with the Wind or something, and the director was like, yeah, they'll do, put those on I suppose, um, because it's completely not in the right, set in the right period. But you know what, it was enjoyable, and I would probably watch it again on like a rainy Sunday or something, but don't watch it if you really want an accurate portrayal of Pride and Tre Prejudice, because that's not what this film is. Moving on to 1980, and we have the first BBC TV adaptation starring Elizabeth Garvey and David Rintel. Having watched a similar TV adaptation of Wuthering Heights, I do wonder if whether directors and producers in this era really kind of understood what the point of a TV adaptation was or really had thought about what they were doing because similar to the Wuthering Heights that I watched this is really literally the book on screen and there's no it's not that there's no thought but for example there's lots of letters in Pride and Prejudice obviously as a plot device and um, people sending letters to each other and in this you get a really literal representation of Lizzie's face reading the letter and a voiceover of the person who'd written the letter to her. And, and, and just that's what you get, just a voiceover of a letter. And you just think, we didn't need to see that. Lizzie could have said to her mother later, oh, I got a letter, and it says that, like, in one sentence. The acting in general I also found really quite awkward and stilted. There's a lot of, while one person's talking, everybody else is, like, what, like listening and waiting for them to be finished with their line, and it just makes it feel... Um, very dull and stilted and weirdly I know this is a bit of a funny point but there's not very much music used and I'm not saying that when you're watching a film or a TV adaptation you need a musical soundtrack happening all the time but there was like no music and because the acting was so slow it was really noticeable that there wasn't any music and it felt very quiet and like 
you kind of feel, why am I watching this? Like, it's just so long. I could just read the book in this time. This is five hours long. Like, what is the point? It does just feel a bit outdated now. And it wasn't bad. Contrary to what I'm saying now, I didn't dislike it actively as I was watching it. I think it's just when I watched um, other versions, I was thinking, oh, what was that? that? That was really boring in comparison. And I wouldn't really recommend um, watching it now unless you have a real desire to watch all the different versions of Pride and Prejudice. Now we get to one of the main attractions, the 1995 TV adaptation starring Jennifer Earl and Colin Firth. This is a really very good, a very enjoyable version, which is also very faithful to the book. And I think one of the reasons it works together so well is that each of the characters interpretations is spot on. I think you really get on screen the almost the exact characters that Jane Austen was writing which means that they work together very well and they're really really very funny um, and quite caricatured and lively and it just works together perfectly. Lizzie is obviously very cutting and very witty and very kind of raised eyebrowy but she's she does it in such a cheeky mischievous way you don't feel like she's unlikable and Colin Firth he is just so gruff and manly like in a way that I don't think you see him in these kind of roles now I just think he gets the mixture of being pride but actually being quite reserved and hiding that reserve um, by being stern I think he gets the balance of Darcy really very well so my other favorite characters are the Bennets they are just absolutely perfect Mr Bennet is quiet and sarcastic but he's he's in control of his family he's not relinquished control so his wife can can run wild and he's really quite amused by it all but still likable he's not stern to the point where you think why would you want him as your dad as I've seen in other um, adaptations Mrs Bennet is so loud so over the top and really embarrassingly rude to Darcy the whole way through through, which is really very funny um, she's quite extreme but I, I guess that is that is who she is in the book so I also feel this is the most accurate portrayal that um, we get of the relationship between Lizzie and Mr Wickham I think a lot of other versions either kind of disregard it and act like she never liked him at all or they make so much of it like she was really in love with Wickham and then she found out he was nasty and this is very accurate because you can see that she likes him but she's not in love with him, she's just charmed by him. And Mr Wickham himself is portrayed very well. You get that glint in his eye when he's going, oh, do you know, do you know the Darcy family, do you? Before he's about to tell his story and say, oh, well, they were, they were very mean to me when they find out, he finds out his audience didn't know the Darcys. And I think he's very good. I think this is the best Wickham um, of all of the interpretations. And one more thing before we move on, I really, really love Julia Swallow's interpretation of Lydia. I think it's absolutely perfect. In a lot of versions, you find that Lydia is loud and annoying and irritable and flirty and really quite arrogant and mean to the rest of her sisters after she marries Wickham and and sort of insufferable you think well, why does Mrs Bennet like Lydia she's horrible Julia Swallow's interpretation is different she's very loud and very fun but she's obviously young and she's obviously naive and she's flirty but in such an innocent way she's just having a really good time like people are telling her to be more proper and it's like it's just going over her head and she's just like oh but I enjoy life and what is also very nice is that you really see the relationship between the older sisters Lizzie and Jane and the younger sisters and you really feel that there is some sisterly affection there between all five of them, not just the younger ones being friends and, and Lizzie thinking that they're a bit beneath her, which I think you do get in some of the other versions. The next version we have is Bride and Prejudice, starring Aishwarya Rai and directed by Gurinder Chada. This is a Bollywood musical version of Pride and Prejudice and I thought it would be a little bit silly um, and I was so pleasantly surprised. I think it's a really, really well thought out um, interpretation. Elizabeth Bennett is now Lalita Bakshi and she lives in Amritsar in India. And I think this film does really well at bringing Pride and Prejudice into the modern world in two main ways. One, because Darcy is American, Mr Bingley and Mr Wickham are English, and the whole story takes place internationally, so the family travel between India, the UK and LA. And it really helps to give you a sense of the distance between these characters, not only in their class and in their communities, but also geographically, like in Pride and Prejudice, when Lizzie's friend Charlotte goes to stay in Kent, like that's really far away. Now, Nowadays, you, it's not far away. So if you had it in a modern day that she was going to Kent, you'd be like, oh, well, I'll see you on Sunday. Um, but the fact that Lalita's friend is going to live in LA, like that's that's really far from her family and, you, and it really works on this level. 
Secondly, the fact that Darcy is American means that he can be proud in a social status that is very relevant today. The way he looks on Indian culture, on arranged weddings and the environment of Amritsar compared to um, the Western world that he's gr brought up in means that he comes across very insensitive and very proud and Lalita is, is very offended. And it just works really well of, as they misinterpret each other unintentionally before eventually falling in love. I also love the fact that it's a musical because it means um, the world in which the Bennets are going to different balls and the fact that dancing with different partners is a very important part of the plot of Pride and Prejudice lends itself really well to this story in which they're going to different people's weddings and they're having lots of dances at the, at the wedding and it's very funny, it's very rom com -y, and it is just a nice feel-good film nothing bad really happens like Alita's sister Lucky runs off with Mr Wickham but they get her back like there's no real big issues um, and it all works out well in the end but it's really fun and not only fun, very very clever Clever, and I really appreciated the way they had thought out their interpretation in the modern day. And finally, the most modern interpretation of 2005 starring Kira Knightley and Matthew McFadden. I am a little bit biased here because I watched this film before reading the book and before seeing any other interpretations um, years ago, and I love it and I, I will always love it, and this will probably always be my favourite version of Pride and Prejudice. I would just describe this film as beautiful. It's shot very, very well. The scenery is wonderful, the music is beautiful, and it's very romantic in, in the way we expect romances now as a modern audience, and it's, it's, I think it's just wonderful. I feel like the main arguments about Pride and Prejudice generally surround whether this film is better than the 1995 Colin Firth version, and having watched a lot of them in recent times, I think what I would say is that the 1995 TV version has a, is a very faithful adaptation of the book and each of the characters is very very well realised in their own right and, and are very very well portrayed. However, I do think the 2005 film as a film, as a piece of art and a self-contained thing is really, really, really much better directed than 1995. And it's a much more modern interpretation of the characters than a direct look at what's on the page and what they are then going to portray as an actor. For example, I think Brenda Bledden is fantastic as Mrs. Bennet. I think she's so funny, but it's a much more subtle performance than you get in the 1995 version, but that's okay, I think. I think Miss Bennet and Miss Bennet are fantastic in 2005. Um, but it's not really exactly what Jane Austen wrote, it's a bit of a different interpretation. So it just depends what you're looking for, I think, really, when you're trying to choose which is your favourite adaptation. Overall, I would say generally my favourite characterizations, I suppose they do come from 1995. I think Jen Fell and Colin Firth are fantastic as Darcy and Lizzie. I, I still love Mr and Mrs Bennet from 2005 version, I think they're fantastic. But generally I like all of the characters from the other one, like Julia Swallow's Lydia Bennett I think is fantastic, Miss Wickham I think is brilliant, I do just think the feel and the general look of the 2005 version is just too beautiful and I think it's still one of my favourite films ever, let alone versions of Pride and Prejudice. So I would love to know what you think of all these different versions, which one is your favourite, whether you agree with me, whether you think I'm really unbiased because I saw that before reading the book, so maybe I have a bit of a different perspective on it from someone else. So I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope that this was interesting and I will see you next time. Bye. Bye! Um, I keep getting really overexcited when I'm about to shoot TBR videos. I'm looking through my book list and I'm like, oh my god, I really want to read this and this and this and this and this. And they give us a big long list and then three months later I've read different things and none of the stuff that's actually on my TBR.